Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Joseph Abraham. Today we're going to talk about SEO. This video is primarily targeted for people on Maui or people who are in kind of small towns, small areas. Um, I'm going to try this new format and the purpose of it is to try to make it so that I can push out these videos really quick without doing a lot of editing. So it's like I'm almost doing them live and I, I'm going to try and do it so I don't even have to put this video into an editing program. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. First thing I have to do is switch to this view and then we're going to go ahead and open up the presentation. Present. All right. SEO according to Joe with Joseph Abraham. What am I talking about today? Uh, this presentation presentation focuses on search engine optimization in two ways, site speed and gen and uh, content generation. So those two things are basically what we're going to talk about. Obviously, SEO is a big topic. There's a lot of things to talk about, but we're just going to try to keep it there. Who am I? My name is Joseph Abraham. I've been making websites since 1995. I'm both a web and game developer, so I make websites and I make games. Um, currently got a game on Steam. Um, I'm a Twitch streamer. I stream on Twitch very regularly, uh, I, pretty much every day. If I can, if I can swing it, I might not stream today, but every day other than today, I'm going to stream. Um, I have a game coming out on February 1st on steam. It's called Familia. That's very exciting. And, uh, I'm really excited because I got to use a lot of my web development skills on that game. Um, I'm from Maui. I've lived in Maui for 20 years total and 16 in San Diego. I just have been back on Maui for a little over a little under two years now. Um, I've been using WordPress for about 16 years now that it's 2020 and I've worked on hundreds of websites, uh, both WordPress and otherwise. Um, so why should you listen to me? Every business I work with, uh, on Maui, uh, regularly ranks first for their desired keywords. Now that's a pretty big claim, but it's totally true. Um, primarily because Maui is not, uh, what I would personally consider a competitive SEO area but uh, we can talk more about that later. Um, I'm also kind of making this video, creating this content. I created this presentation because I see a lot of people using really weak SEO strategies and they're being sold them and they're being sold them very well. But what, what's happening is the selling is a much better, um, the selling is much more well done than the actual SEO. So what I'm trying to do is provide people with um, some solid SEO strategy that'll help them actually make more money for their business. Um, and there's not gonna be any real like magic tricks here. This is just kind of like how to focus your hard work, you know? So that leads me to my first point, which is gonna be a bit controversial, but SEO is actually very hard work. Um, SEO is a long-term marketing strategy. It's not a passive working strategy. That means that you have to do it for a long time and the dividends don't pay for a long time, but uh, and by a long time, I mean like a few months, a year. Um, that's a long time in internet time. A sec. And for some people, you know, I'm an SEO specialist, but I very often tell people that, you know, you might not benefit a lot from pushing your SEO a lot, you know, with some of the ideas that I'm going to present in this presentation. It might not be the best idea for you to try to do an SEO strategy right now. There might be other things that I would say are a higher priority or are more suited to your business model. Um, this presentation is very much oriented towards small businesses on Maui. I already stated that, but you know, I just wanna be very clear about who I'm targeting because you might say, oh, that wouldn't work for my business. And I guarantee you a lot of people who are watching this video, it will not work for your business. So I'm telling you specifically who I sculpted this presentation for. The importance of site speed cannot be overstated. You may need to change your hosting provider. Now, basically, I told you I'm going to talk about two things, site speed and uh, I think it was content, right? So site speed is important, okay? Let's just get that in your head. It's important. It's like the starting place of building faster SEO. If your site is not fast, Google will not see your site as a quality site. It will not rank you. It's as simple as that. So I'm going to tell you how you can probably get fast. I'm going to tell you what most of the people I come across 
usually do to make their site faster or what I do for them to make their site, fa their site faster. But just lock that into your brain that slow sites don't rank on Google. Um, so, hmm, <laughs> you don't want to change your hosting provider? Looking forward to seeing you on Instagram. Now, this is kind of a cut because if somebody isn't wanting to change their hosting provider, my reaction is if they have a slow hosting provider that, you know, SEO is not going to work for them. So if you're going to spend time doing some of the stuff we're going to talk about later, you might as well not bother if you're not really willing to maybe make the change to your hosting provider that you need to in order to get your site to be faster. And that's a lot. That's really hard for a lot of people to take, um, especially because hosting companies have spent billions of dollars finding ways to make you loyal to their brand while skimming on quality service. And this is very true with some of the biggest hosts out there. It's not true with all the big hosts. Just because they're a big host doesn't necessarily mean that they're a bad host. I'm not going to talk about who's a good host and who's a bad host here on this video right now because I want this to be a video that is relevant well into the future. And hosts change all the time. You know, one, one host will be at the top of my list and then they'll make a major change in their company and I'll drop them right down to the bottom. That's something that's happened really recently. Um, some companies will be doing a really bad job and then they'll get better. We're web developers. I have my kind of ear on the train track. I guess I don't need to wear these. I have my ear on the train track regarding this matter. So, you know, I know what's going on, but needless to say, I'm, not, I'm also hesitant to, to trash talk particular companies specifically because as you know, that's not necessarily good form and it might bite me in the butt later. Um, okay, so these are the three ways how to fix speed. The following are the most important common issues affecting site speed. That can be slow for an unlimited amount of reasons. So this, what I'm saying is these three reasons don't cover everything. Um, site can be slow for an unlimited amount of reasons, but these are the culprits for most cases from my experience. Okay, the number one, which we've been talking about is hosting provider. Uh, the number two is images. Sometimes people like to post a lot of images that are not optimized and they can really slow down their site. And the number three reason that I see like regularly around me for people's sites being slow is their PHP and WordPress version. So PHP is a programming language and it has different versions. So you can kind of update it and, and kind of move along as you go. And WordPress is obviously my favorite platform. Um, it's the platform I make pretty much all my sites on. It's this platform I make all my sites on. I do sometimes help with SEO on, on other platforms, but if I can, I'll always use WordPress. It's uh, my preferred platform um, for websites. So moving on, other than speed, the other factor for SEO is content. Speed is more upfront, but content generation is much more of a long-term process. What I'm saying there is that getting your site speed is something that I have difficulty kind of initially getting my clients to do, but once they do it, it's done. And you do have to kind of make incremental corrections as you go uh, to keep your site fast, but really most of that work is an initial bit of work and maybe a change in the way you do things, and then you're good. And then you don't have to really think about it as much anymore. Content is the opposite. Content is not very difficult up front. Um, maybe it is for some of the content, but it's something that you have to keep doing in order to be beneficial. So that primarily refers to blog content. Now that's a picture of me looking much better than I do right now in this video. But um, these days as a web developer, I spend more time producing content than any other task. Now that sounds weird. I should just call myself a writer and to a certain extent I am, but I am a web developer by trade and I just happen to write as well. And it just so happens for me personally that writing is the primary service that most of my clients need. Even if a business provides their own copy, it tends to take just as much time as if I write it myself. So even if I'm allowing my client to write their copy, which I tend not to do, I tend to want to write it myself because I just can measure the time frame and know that it's going to get done if I do it. Um, but even if they write it themselves, I spend just as much of my own time writing it or, or pushing them to either write or just kind of encouraging them to write or finding a way to get them to write. You know, so um, 
what I'm saying here is people think that SEO is like a technical, they think of it as a technical discipline, right? They think of it like, you know, a programmer, it's all tech, techy stuff. But really, I, if you want to generate more search engine traffic, the bulk hours of the time that you're going to spend are going to go towards writing, which most people don't consider writing a technical task. Um, it is, but in most people's minds, uh, they don't really think of it that way. With modern tools, creating an entry-level website is more in, uh, more attainable than ever. What I'm saying here is uh, WordPress or uh, more you know, available tools, more approachable tools, more marketed tools, they all exist. And pretty much anybody who is worth their weight in salt can go and make a website on WordPress or another platform without even hiring anybody, just kind of figuring it out. And that's great. Um, most of the time when I come across somebody who has like all that skill and know how to make their own website, they really just struggle with creating the content. And again, what I'm emphasizing here is that the content is just hard to create, you know? So if you're having a hard time creating content, uh, you're not gonna be able to make your website. And, and I can't understate the value of being able to create content for your website. That is what you need to be getting about first um, before you even start you know, worrying about the technical aspects of the site. Honestly, you can write out the whole site. You, I've had people who have approached me uh, with with a totally written out site and I took it and I converted it to a website and I could literally do it inside of days. Um, where if they do it, if, if we do it without the content, the process turns into weeks or months or a year, you know, so that's just to give you an idea. Content, if I haven't made this point, it is the bulk of the work. Um, so basically here, I'm going to discuss some tips for how to make content since it is such a difficult task and it takes so much time. Here are some tips for writing for your site or a site. Uh, I generally prefer to write directly into WordPress. Um, a lot of people don't, a lot of people like to use uh, Microsoft word or another program. I would highly recommend against using word specifically because sometimes it adds code to your text. And it'll, it'll add what we call artifacts. And artifacts are sometimes undetectable code um, that are in your site that you'll never know about. And you know that's a liability because it can break your site without you even knowing it. Um, I would say try to get a minimum of 500 words on each page that you want to rank. Uh, to be specific, you don't necessarily need all of your pages to rank um, and show up in search engines, and that's fine. But if you do want a specific page to rank in a search engine, I highly recommend putting a minimum of 500 words on that page. You can put more. Um, you can put 1,000 or 1,500 or uh, 2,000. But generally speaking, two pages with 500 will get you more SEO kind of uh, prowess than one page with 1,000. So if you already have 1,000 words, it might be a good idea to split that up into two. But having um, high word count, uh, a thousand to two thousand is great. Uh, the, you've heard it officially from me here. I'm not saying not to use high word count pages. I'm just saying that if you're having a difficult time producing content as it is, it might be a better idea to have more pages at that 500 mark. And you know, it's it also depends on the subject matter. If it doesn't make sense for it to be split up, or if it makes more sense for it to be split up, that's a factor in in how un understandable the content is when you change the architecture of the information. Um, use Grammarly. If you don't know what Grammarly is, I'll probably put a link in this video description, but Grammarly is basically a grammar tool. Uh, it also helps with spelling. There's a premium version that helps with tone, whether you want to, or like uh, reading level, all this kind of great stuff. So get Grammarly. It'll make you sound a lot smarter, keep you from being embarrassed, help people understand what you're saying. Okay, so basically I've categorized content into three categories and I'm talking specifically about written content. And we have static content, blog content, and product content. Static content. Static content is usually found in pages, not posts. Static content uh, is what you create first. So uh, some examples of static content are the home page, the about page, the services page, the frequently asked questions, you know, this is static content. This is stuff that very seldom changes. If you do update, you might update a paragraph or a word here and there. Uh, but for the most part, this content stays the same and it stays right in front of the viewer all the time. So 
Because it's in front of the viewer all the time, static content is the most viewed and read content on a website. Static content should be the most polished content on your site. Pretty simple, self-explanatory. Um, and the second uh, type of content we talked about was blog content. Content marketing on Maui specifically is not competitive. Now, if you're not on Maui and you're in some kind of rural area, uh, your content is not going to probably be competitive. It could be, it could not be. Um, but I lived in a city in San Diego, and I would say that content marketing there is was extremely competitive. And I, to, to the extent where some of the content strategies that I recommend for people here, I wouldn't recommend for most businesses in San Diego. So you need to kind of get a grip of how competitive the searches are. Uh, the quickest way to do that would just be to Google what you want to show up in and look at the sites that are popping up and look at the kind of content they're providing. And if you can do it better than they can, and you can do it more frequently than they can, you might, you probably should go and consider a content strategy. The business sites with blogs rank higher in searches than sites without blogs. Now this is just a given. Um, I think you kind of, I've gathered this, but if you go look at any given search uh, for any given topic, uh, you're always going to find that the sites that have more content are raking better than the ones that are not. You don't have to take my word for it. Just go do it right now. Pause this video. Go Google any random keyword and look at what's ranking. It's always going to have a lot of the traits that I've described, the 500 word count, you know, the blog, the regular, the, the regular updates, the, the good grammar. Um, they're going to be, it's going to be a fast site. All this stuff. It's not rocket science. It's not mysterious. It's just doing it right. So go ahead. I challenge you. Pause this video. Go do that right now. And I'm assuming you're back now. So let's continue going. So consistency is paramount. Paramount. Paramount? Uh, volume is secondary. Um, so what I'm saying there, a lot of people who do blogs, the temptation is to just write like crazy and push out like a blog a day for a month and then burn out and stop for the rest of the year. That's not the way you want to do it. If you are writing the 30 pay, the 30 blog posts for um, in one month, my recommendation would be to spread out those posts over the course of a year or even two years, depending on how, if you know how much you're going to want to write later. So I tend to put out maybe one or two blogs a month um, and you know, I'm going to probably be putting out like a, a video a month and I'm just more oriented towards doing that consistent, consistently. So just do it consistently. Don't worry so much about, you know, doing a lot at once. So for me, I have a lot of clients who just have a hard time getting started. So my advice to them would be don't get hung up on writing the most engaging, engaging and emotionally captivating content ever published on WordPress. Okay? Just don't. Don't worry. Like, just, you can do it. Get something out there. Write something. Get started. Don't worry about it being perfect. That's okay. Um, and this is a very controversial statement that I'm going to say, but I believe it. Create content for Google first and customers second. So that sounds a lot of crazy, that sounds really crazy. And I'm talking in the specific context of blog posts. But the reason you're making the blog is so that you rank in Google. Okay? Let's just establish that. Um, if you have that set up in your mind, you're not going to get crushed when nobody really reads your blog. Because I'm going to be honest with you, not a lot of people are going to read it. So if you're going to put out blogs and expect them to be like totally like go huge and viral that's not going to happen for the vast majority of all of you ever and i'm just being real but if you create that content knowing that the purpose of the content is for you to help rank your main site in google higher and get more traffic that way then you're less likely to be kind of emotionally crushed when the site doesn't end up you know becoming the next big thing I hope you guys get that. I'm not saying don't write good stuff again, I'm, but I am saying, you know, don't let it hurt your feelings if it doesn't go here. A common mistake small businesses uh, make with their websites is not knowing the difference between news and blogs. Okay. Uh, it looks tacky to have a six month old news post. It's less tacky to have a six month old evergreen post. Now in content, evergreen content is content 
that is always relevant, that is always useful, or at the very least, it's useful for a much longer time than um, dated content. So news, for example, a headline is not evergreen content. It becomes very much irrelevant very quickly. Um, so it's important when you start your blog or you start your site to know what you want to do. Do you want to be a news site? And that's great if you do, but the what you're trying to do with a news site is different than what you're trying to do with what I would consider an evergreen content blog, which is what I normally do. With a blog, you want to create content that is continually valuable and will pay continual dividends over a long period of time. News blogs, it's more about getting up the quickest thing possible and being up to date with the latest headlines. And that's good too, but I just want to make sure that you know what your goals are. Okay, so we've talked about blogs. Let's talk about products. Uh, products are the secret weapon in SEO. Many websites uh, direct their visitors elsewhere to close the sale. This is detrimental to SEO. Um, so words are words. Basically, if you have descriptions on a product, those are all scannable, crawlable, searchable words that will be used by Google to index your site. The more indexable pages on your website, the more search and visibility you're going to have, the bottom line. On sales, on site sales means on site trust. So a user who doesn't um, leave a site feels more confidence in a site. So if you have to leave a site to convert, to, to pay for something, or to, to you, you, and you don't know the person personally, and you don't have a ton of confidence in, in what you're doing, uh, you might get scared off to have to leave the site and process your payment in PayPal or you know some other off-site um, system. So what I would say is if you can keep the customer there, they're going to believe more that your site is legit than if they have to go off to some random site or if you send them to like a Amazon affiliate link or something. Um, another thing I want to say about products is no sales, no problem. So if you don't make the sales, it's cool. Uh, the internet's the only place in the world where you can put something up to sell, and if you don't sell it, it's not a problem, especially with the digital product, because it doesn't really take up space anywhere. If you have a physical store, and if you don't, if you put something up for sale and you don't sell it, that is a huge cost. You've lost a lot. You've lost a lot of money for the space to put the place, the shipping to have it sent to you, you know, the labor of having it categorized or whatever, and put in the spot. So the internet is a great place to sell things because there's no liability and it's a great place to get started selling things because there's very little overhead. Okay, so that pretty much concludes my presentation. Long story short is your site fast and write a blog. Pretty simple, right? Um, here are some other things I'm thinking about talking about. Uh, let me know in the comments if you're interested in me uh, kind of addressing any of these things. One thing I've thought about making content about is schema. The other thing is uh, link building, if you know what that is. And uh, keyword frequency is another thing I've been asked about. So let me know what you think. Let me know if you're interested in any of these things. And also, if you have any questions about the presentation itself, uh, feel free to comment below on this video. Or you can hit me up on my website or email me. I prefer comments because then I'll be able to kind of keep track of what we're saying and where you got me from. If you email me, I might forget what particular video we're talking about. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and bring my face back up to the full screen. And I just want you to let, I want you to know that I appreciate you coming by and I appreciate you watching this video. And I hope you got something out of it. I hope it was good for you. And make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the like button. If you think it was a stupid video, make sure you hit the dislike button. And I just want to say aloha from Maui. I'll talk to you later. Okay, bye.